I'd like to ask you a question. Just please try to remember being 24 years old. You have, okay? Okay. Now, try to see, please tell me, how would you communicate to a recently uh, married couple that the husband is dying of cancer? You are 24 years old. Well, I was 24 years old, just uh, recently graduated in medicine. And I, will, I had the chance to be accepted in one of the best internal medicine uh, departments in Barcelona. And uh, some patients were appointed to me. And uh, among the patients, there was a young guy, 34, 32 years old, an engineer from Mataró. He was just married, some few months married, with a nice girl, very nice girl. And they looked very happy. They were in love, in fact. In a few days, we had the diagnosis, lymphoma, blood cancer. In, 70s, in the 70s, lymphoma was a disease and the possibilities to cure it were really very, very low. I was shocked. I didn't know what to do. These people were telling me, oh, we want to have children and form a family. No, no. What could I say? How could I look at the eyes, straight from the eyes of the patients, of the couple, and tell them what I had to do? At this moment, I realized that during the medical school studies, I had been very well trained in physiology, anatomy, anatomy in electrophysiology, all those things. I knew it very well. But I had not been trained how to manage these situations. When the patient looks at you with fear, with uh, uh, anxiety, <laughs> and with pain, how do you manage his emotions? And how do you manage your own emotions, 24 years old? So really, what I did is I went to my books, no? big medical books. Nothing, 100% science. I went to the uh, medical journals, nothing. In the meetings, in the medical meetings we had, we were only talking about science, nothing at all. I looked around, my young colleagues, and it was the same. They were in the same situation. And I asked myself, why in the university I spent so much time learning histology, biochemistry, and all those things which are really very, very important. And they, did, they didn't treat me how to manage these difficult situations. Why? Why was that? Well, finally what happened is that uh, I did what everybody did. No? We had um, the trial and error method. Then we observed the older physicians, how they were doing it. I was very lucky to be in a very good department where there were good humanistic physicians. But as I've seen, many, many of my colleagues didn't have the same luck to have these humanistic masters over there. A friend of mine, and a prestigious cardiology from the South, he told me, Nico, you know, you know that uh, some years ago I had cancer. So I went to one of the most prestigious American clinics. And over there, you know, I don't speak English well. I don't speak English. So when I was in bed and the physicians were going around, I was trying to listen, to see their, the way that they were moving, the way that they're talking, trying to get some evidence, some hope. I was hanging from there. Uh, uh, mouths. It was really terrible. When I returned back home, I said, okay, I'm going to treat my patients the way, the same way that I wanted to be treated. And now, you know, I'm semi-retired, but <laughs> every week I need to see my patients. At least one day, I stay with them, I support them, I talk with them, 
And what happens is that I get so much self-confidence. I'm so happy. I'm really very blessed to be a physician. Because medicine is really a fantastic, it is an extraordinary profession. When the patient, when the, the physician and the patient, they connect. When the, 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 the physician can connect to the patient and give and support his fears and his pain and alleviate his pain and all these things, he feels so happy. He thinks, I'm doing something which is really very good. I help people. And most of the physicians are vocational. So, what happens is that uh, if, he doesn't, if he doesn't give, he doesn't take. And his, his profession is becoming a routine, a frustrating routine, and he even comes to burnout, and he doesn't like his profession. There is, um, so medicine, medicine is not only the connection of, me, of physician and patient, it's only science, it's also science. So, Hippocrates, of course, the father of our profession, he said that, he defined ex extraordinarily well what is medicine. The art of medicine is a combination of two parts, both of them the same importance. First is excellence in science, and the second one is excellence in the human touch, how you treat people, both of them, not only one. Today, we do know that Excellent, excellent science combined with um, uh, human touch decreases costs of health care and increases outcome. 20,000 20, patients recently, diabetic patients, they were treating two groups. The first group treated by empathic, empathetic physicians. The other one, non-empathetic physicians. The results, 30% of uh, the, the group which was treated by the empathetic uh, physicians, they were 30% better controlled with lower use of medicines. So, science with uh, human touch, they increase the outcomes and they decrease the loss. You may have been recently to a visit with a physician. Normally, it is 10, 15 minutes. This is what the Americans say. This is the middle one. And you may have seen the physician struggling to, to introduce some data to the computer. He may not even have crossed eyes with you. He didn't have time to do that. It's not good. The, this is a problem. It's not good for the physician. There are consequences for that. In Mayo Clinic, they have found that 45% of the physicians are not happy at all with their work and life balance. They're not happy with their business, with, with their profession. And more than 50% are, have at least one symptom of burnout. This is not good. The percentage are improving, are increasing considerably year after year. The American Psychiatric Association, this year, in May 18, in their annual meeting, one of the main problems that they had, main issues, was work-life balance, well-being of physicians, and burnout. They were trying to see how we can help the rest of the physicians, all the physicians, in order to overcome this problem. No doubt, we have a problem. We have a problem, and the problem is for everyone, because all of us are potential patients. All of us are potential. It is also for the society. So, all of us, we have to try to do our best in order to maintain this sacred flame of human touch combined with excellency in science. We have to do that. We have to give more time more time to the physician to get in contact with the patient. It's going to be good for both of them. It is going to decrease costs. And we have to learn how to use 
technology in order to bring the physician and the patient nearer, not to separate them. It has come technology here and it's going to stay. And we are in a moment in the age of disruptive technology. But what is going to happen is it is going to help very much in science. But don't forget, technology is never going to substitute the human touch of the physicians. It is not that. Now, I have good, I have good news. <laughs> I have good news. I have good news all around the globe. There are many initiatives, people are conscious and they're trying to keep the flame alive. Also in Spain, there are many initiatives that are existing. Recently, a group of, of uh, healthcare professionals, physicians, pharmacists, dentists, nurses, also deans of medical schools, leaders of, of medical societies, they created a movement, a non-for-profit organization, which has two objectives. First is promote their, their awareness, keep the flame alive. And the second is support each one of the healthcare professionals so that during all his time to be able to maintain the humanistic passion that they had at the beginning of their career. Because many of them lose it. How do they work? Well, what they work is through, they work side by side with universities, medical schools, medical societies, and hospitals. And they create Hippocratic chapters in each one of them. What does a Hippocratic chapter do? It has four objectives. The first one is, Maintain the flame, awareness. Hey, hey, don't forget. No? This is one very important thing. The second thing is through conferences, publications, courses, seminars, to teach the physicians how to manage, the students how to manage their own emotions, how to use the technology in order to bring patient and physician together. We can do that. There are ways to do that. The third thing is to offer to the physicians examples, icons. Prestigious people, physicians and nurses and dentists, who have been able during all their career, professional career, to combine both things, excellence in science and the human touch. So they recognize them as outstanding Hippocratic professionals. They honor them with a plaque, which has a leaf from the legendary tree of Hippocrates of the island, of course, embedded that over there. And their name is uh, recorded in the Book of Honor at the Hippocratic Museum of the island, of course. And they are the samples. They are the examples that the physicians can follow. And the fourth thing is maintain the, the idea, keep telling to the physicians which are the fundamentals of our profession and which are the compromise, the commitment we have in the society. And so, what we do is bring off springs, sprouts, small trees, from the island, of course, from the legendary Hippocrates. We put it in the universities, and over there, with the boost of Hippocrates, the graduate, during the graduation of the new physicians, they take their oath over there. Before that, there was a ceremony where the dean of the, of the medical school reminds them, first, the fundamentals of our profession, and then the commitment they are going to swore in some, in some minutes with the society that they are going to be really good doctors trying to do both 
excellent science and human touch, both of them. Well, no doubt, these are things which are really, it's not an easy task. It is going to be a very difficult task. We need many hands. T titanic efforts have to be done. We need a lot of time. We need resources. We need many, many initiatives like that. But sincerely, I think that in some time, a 25-year just graduated physician will feel very well prepared in order to communicate with um, human touch to a just a recently married couple the diagnosis of lymphoma. Thank you very much. <laughs>